Jeff, we're back on. Just started the recording. The uh, leaf blower guy just made a pass, went by. And uh, again, I marvel at these guys. I'm down here in the desert at our place in Mission Hills. Here it is, July, first part of July. And these guys blow my mind, like around 3.30 or 4 in the afternoon when I think it's like unbearable. These dudes are out there just smiling and working and... And it's like, wow, you're you're such a better you're such a better man than I am. I could see in the morning do a little physical labor out there, but when it's like 109, and right, and he's go, got the backpack backpack blower on. Oh yeah, you know, and they and they're all covered up. They got the stuff all over them, and and they're just loving it. I mean, yeah. So, you know, and you feel like if you walked out there, you would just instantly like, you know, spontaneous combustion. You would just burst into flames. Well, it would be, <laughs> it would be exfoliation. You know, my skin would just start to, anyway. Yeah. Um, Drip off. Yeah. So we're here in the desert and it's, it's, it's awesome down here in the summertime, actually. And the mornings are just insanely beautiful. Um, yeah. As they said, you know, the afternoons, it heats up, desert heats up. The desert floor heats up during the day, gets gets pretty darn hot, but, uh, you know, it's uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. So, uh, hey, listen, I want to talk to you about something today, uh, technique-wise, with, uh, with a backhand slice. And before we get into that, I just want to remind everybody a couple things. Number one, thank you for joining me in Jeff Jacklich again. I'm Brent Abel. That guy over there somewhere is Jeff Jacklich. Uh, and he's in Pontiac, Michigan right now for, till what, the end of October? And the end of September, probably. End of, end of September, and then back to yep. Northern California at the Wesson Lawn Tennis Club in Pontiac, Michigan. So if you're in the Midwest and you're looking for, uh, you know, either major surgery on your game or just something minor, uh, I think Jeff could uh, provide services for you. I'm um, seeing And then during the wintertime, you're back in the Napa, Northern California, Napa area. Um, yeah. So that's cool. Listen, uh, guys, thanks for hanging out with us today. Gold ball hunting is the is ground zero for us. We're doing a daily podcast, a uh, daily episode on our, on our podcast. You can find us on YouTube. We're also on iTunes and also at Stitcher. I, Stitcher, I don't know what, it's Stitcher. Okay. They, they, they somehow <laughs> distribute our stuff other than iTunes on the audio thing. Um, but we're talking about, you know, today we're, we're going to talk about technique, but usually we talk about mental stuff um, and really how to reduce your skill level range where one day you come out, you play great, you think you got the game figured out, and the next day you go out and you lay a big fat egg out there and it's not quite figured out. So that's your skill level range. One day here, top your skill level, the next day, hopefully not totally at the bottom of your skill level, but <laughs> enough to where it's kind of concerning. And our job really through this, through this podcast, our whole main goal is to help you reduce your skill level range so that you become, in your mind certainly, a lot more predictable, whether it's singles and doubles, that every day, if this is the top of your level skill level range, there's no longer a big low bottom down there. It's actually up right. in here. So go over to goldballhunting.com. Uh, get signed up. It's just a first name. It's email. It's a couple of free things over there. A video that Jeff and I recorded months ago. Give you some ideas <clears> of <throat> how to reduce your skill level range permanently so you can start to build confidence. And then secondly, uh, we're offering a free private 10-minute coaching call. We'd love to get you on it because there may be one thing in your game right now you cannot quite figure out. And uh, bring that to the call and we're going to help you. Uh, put you in the path to start getting that result that you really want out of your yeah out of your game. So, uh, stroke technique. I want to talk about the slice backhand, which recently I did a um, you know I, I, I sold a bunch of courses to my to my email list to my to my web tennis community on the slice backhand, and we worked through a couple of fundamentals uh, on that that maybe you're counterintuitive to what a lot of players think about in, in terms of how to, how to really play more of an offensive slice backhand. I would say primarily that the number one thing is that it's not a high to low swing path. 
there might, right. I mean, you might set up, a, you know, I, I like to set up about shoulder high with a racket, but in the end, when I end up address, when I end up addressing the ball, it's not a downward hack. It, no. it, and, and in fact, if it's a downward hack, you end up producing too much spin. So one of the things that I coach on it is actually our job here is to make the ball spin a certain direction, but not a ton. It's really about less spin right. than more spin. And I think, uh, I think most players think, and I think a lot of coaches uh, uh, erroneously teach that you need to get more spin to play an offensive slice back in drop, right. blah, blah, blah. Uh, one of the questions I got from one of our students was, when they're returning serve from the deuce side, in doubles, and this is a right-handed player, and the serve goes into their backhand side, and they want to play that slice backhand back cross court, back to the server, back towards that server's alley. And so the question from him was, how do I do that? What are the things, what are the cues uh, for being able to do that? So. You got one or two like major cues in terms of how you would play that slice back in return to serve from the do side back cross court um, mm. back back towards the server back back over there there in that direction in that back direction, over there right yeah um yeah because it's uh, I had to figure that out you know I played my whole career on the ad side. Right. It just came naturally, naturally to me and my partner uh, during that time, Mark Nicholson, just naturally hit an inside-out backhand that was second to none. I mean, I, I still can't do it the way was he that, can do it. Was that a topper or was that a slice or, or, or what? It, he, he was just able to drag that racket through the ball, and it, was kind of, it, wasn't, it wasn't really a, a true topper. It was almost, almost a three-quarter okay. roll. You know what I mean? He yeah. kind of came – Kind of came up and across the ball, Tough. but it was just natural. It was just wow. natural for him. It just it would it just came out. It yeah. wasn't something out. It's just something he did naturally. Um, and talk about um, you know grip tension being just just relaxed. Right. I mean you know you know you know Mark. And um, so I played my whole career off the ad side, um, and so together it was very complimentary for us. Um, but so when I when I jumped back into playing in 2012, the, the senior nationals. Um, um, you know, I had to start playing the do side because the partner, John Sutter, he kind of, you know, he insisted he wanted to play the ad side and rightly so hyper accurate, you know, got the ball down at the guy's feet coming in, made me look like a hero at the net. Right. So uh, it definitely worked for us. But uh, my ability, though, to, you know, return at at what I would think my highest level, I probably I'm not I'm still not quite perfectly comfortable over there. And that's just a personal thing that it just. Um, you know, when I start playing, you know, that level of ball, but so for me, I had to really figure out mentally, like, how do I negotiate this to get a ball back over there? And so first it was kind of, it kind of boggled me a little bit. And then I just went, you know, really my, my whole thing is I just want to hit it back to the server. Don't think about the angle. Don't think about the, the geometry. Don't think about, you know, the lines on the court can actually be a deterrent. It, they can throw you off a little bit because in dubs you're, you're on severe, you're on a severe angle there on the return. And it, it, the net's going to go, it's not squared. You know what I mean? So everything kind of visually doesn't line up with hitting the ball back to where you hit it. Now, if we just, if we took everything away, the net, the lines, all of that, and you just stood there, 78 feet, 80 feet from the guy, and the guy hits you a ball, you could stand there and hit the ball back to him all day long. Right. With, without, without a worry in the world, right, right. off the back end Well, side. plus, I mean, the other, the other element is you got the server's partner up there, too. Right. And that, that element, you've just got to, when you first start working at this, you just have to totally eliminate it. You have to just ignore it. it listen, if he goes, he goes. Right. But for me, the one, the one thing that I figured out that helped me the most was simply hit the ball back to the server. And so it, it helped me just square myself, you know, so, so now I'm actually facing the server. I'm not lined up to the geometry of the lines on the court. Right. I'm lined up just facing the server, you know, 50%, 50%, either way, I can go forehand or backhand, and then hit the ball back to him. 
And that for me kind of solved a lot of the, the kind of odd geometry visual what kind of threw me off there a little bit. So that, that would be my number one thing is that if well, you're let me, having let me, trouble. All right. So, so let me, let me stop you there. Um, that's an interesting visual. You know, when you said, hey, look, my job as a returner from the deuce court, I'm right-handed, is just to play it back to the guy who's serving to me. And, right. and, and you know, I mean, once in a while you get, you get an oddball guy over there who will serve to the deuce court like he's playing singles. He'll serve from, you know, like, right. like the center hash mark. Okay, right. that's fine. So maybe, maybe in that case, but that's, that's, that's pretty darn rare. But if you right. use that, that as your target, and almost like, yeah, all we're doing is just kind of rallying the ball back along this line here. Right. Well, if that's the case, then I'm going to, like you said, I'm going to face the guy. My chest is totally facing the guy. I'm not, not facing the net forward. And uh, so I like that visual of thinking, all I got to do is just hit the ball back to this guy. And that's it. Right. Okay, go ahead. And then, then, then I don't feel like like if if I once I'm aligned correctly and I'm, I'm facing, then I also don't feel like I have to overturn on the backhand side to, right. to hit the slice. And we're talking about you know uh, you know we want to just we just want to hit a knockdown slice sure, cross right. court, you know nothing just to knock it down over there. Yeah. And so if I can if I can get myself. It, for me, anyway, if I can get myself aligned right, then the stroke itself is is pretty easy. Um, you know, don't be overly aggressive. Like, don't don't be greedy about how much damage you're trying to do with the first contact of the ball with, the, with the return serve. Good. Um, I think that's that's a real easy thing to do. Um, we can get a little greedy with wanting to do more damage than necessary. Well, look, uh, I mean, you've got a partner who's up there at net. Right, who's starting up there right. at net, and your job is to put the ball in a place that enables your partner to now be able to get involved. Right. And and I played with a I play I played with a couple guys who love to unload on their return. I mean, just love to beat the living crap out of the return. And if it goes in, right, I, I'm not really part of the deal. There's no way for me to be right. able to to kind of get involved in me. And you know me, I like to show a little movement. I like to distract a little bit up there. Um, and and if, if everything's going that fast, there's no way. Right. And look, the better players, the better players invite you to hit with pace because the, the transitional volley of incoming pace is whoop-de-doo. No big deal. Right. If the ball's going to make it to me. <laughs> yeah. I've got something to actually just play back. And... I just got to stick my racket out that's here. Right. And Thank that's you. That's it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think that's, um, you know, the, the confusion that happens is I think it's really easy off the deuce side um, to get over like hyper technical. Yeah. And it just gets, and it gets, just, just becomes complex. Yeah. Well, look for me, I feel like, if and, and look, my 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 ultimate goal is always to try to hit the ball back cross court because I want to get it in front of my partner. I yeah, want the ball right. in front of my partner. And I'm like they're they're and 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 so for me to do that efficiently, I do have to do. I, so, and let's talk about the slice backhand. I do have to get a certain body alignment if right. I'm going to play that slice backhand. I can't just keep facing the guy and kind of reach over to my left and sort of poke it over there. I've actually right. got to be able to to get turned sideways. So for me, there's there's a couple things that 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 I, that I have to do. Is that I've really got to commit to a full shoulder turn. So as soon as the right. ball leaves the server's racket uh, and I see the ball's on my left, I've got to get a full shoulder turn on balance. And then if I'm going to slide it over there, uh, I feel like I need to stay sideways throughout the swing because I like what I talked about at the beginning. It is a linear swing path. Right, it's right. not a big, heavy, high to low hack, which in doubles is probably going to sit up, which is probably going to feed the server's partner, which is probably going to get your partner tattooed. Right, not a good, <laughs> not a good uh, scenario right there. So yeah. those two things for me, and and you're right, it's easier for me, it's more efficient if I'm facing the server to be able to get that full shoulder turn right. as a righty, create the linear yeah. swing path, and then stay. And look, there are going to be times too where the guy just throws in a bomb and I don't have time 
Well, right. what's wrong? What's wrong with a lob return to serve? Right. I yeah, mean, abort the mission. Abort the mission. Throw the ball up in the air. At least make the guys touch the ball to win the point. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? I want to say this too. I don't want anybody to be confused when I say it, you know we're just hitting a little knockdown return that it's like this. That's right. I'm, you know, we're, the the swing path is still linear. I'm still driving my hand and and that out toward the target. Um, it just, that the knockdown just becomes kind of a pace thing, a little backspin on it, and and the ball just naturally kind of dies on you a little bit as it crosses the net. So, but it's not this. Not I'm not. No, no. I'm not chopping at the ball. So no. I want to be clear on that. It's it's just a term. Um, and so, uh, well, you're but, right. Anyway, I mean, so. I mean, the term could be interpreted as as what you just described. Yeah. But it's a it's a real hack job. I mean, look, the ultimate goal mm-hmm. is to get it down to the server's feet, right? If the ser- it's a certain volume right. guy, your job is not to hit the winner. Your job is to get it down in front of the server's feet and or at the server's feet and let your partner then uh, have an opportunity to try to take over. Um, right. I think this is good, Jeff. This is good. good. I, I I'm, don't want to add too much to it because I don't want to complicate it. And uh, yeah. And I just think. No, I think. Uh, yeah, it can get overly complicated really quickly. Yeah, yeah. good. You good. just keep the idea that you know don't don't get overly don't don't get overly anxiety over anxiety over the net guy. Over anxiety over the net guy. I love it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know what I mean. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. just because he's moving and getting, giving you movement and everything, until he actually shows you what right. he can do. Yeah, ignore him. Yeah, ignore good. him. And just because he goes out there once. Yeah. You know, I mean, if I if I kind of hack the return up a little bit and it's floating across the center of the court and and then he comes across and gets it. Well, that's what he's supposed to do. Right. I look at it and kind of go, God, the guy didn't go. I just I just dished up right. a cupcake. Right. And the guy didn't make his move. Right. Or, you know, so that that, you know, I make note of that. And then the other side of the coin is I just dished up a cupcake and the guy came across and took it and put it away. He's supposed to. Yeah. You know, if he's really paying attention, that's a crime of opportunity. So, well, that's right. So, I mean, as, it's, it's, so it's, as as a ret- yeah, as a returner, I don't yeah, I don't I don't see that as like he that was like premeditated murder. It was right. it was just a crime of opportunity. So I expect that. So I don't really count that. That oh, he's really active and he's really oh, that's a good point. He can really that's you know that's really a good point. I think a lot of players do that where they throw up a duck and the guy crosses. And you go, oh my God! Now I got to be concerned with this guy. And you're absolutely right, Jeff. I mean, that is a crime, simply of opportunity. It was you were the one as a returner who enabled the guy. He wasn't planning. I mean, was he going to go if you got a half decent return cross court? No, probably not. No. I left. I left the keys in the car. It was a Ferrari. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> I left the keys in the car, and the guy poached. All right. No. Okay. What the hell? Good anyway. Deal. All right. Well, listen, guys, uh, thanks again for hanging out with us today. You know, I would love to actually see some comments uh, on on this episode in terms of if you're playing doubles and return to serve from the deuce court and you're righty or the opposite, if you're in the ad side, with you're a lefty and you're having a little tricky time with that with that backhand return to serve, keeping away from the net guy. Let us know what's going on in the comments, whether you're at YouTube or shoot us an email. The email address is let us know at goldballhunting.com. So, Jeffrey, without stealing your thunder, what would we like to find folks to do right now? Like us, share us, please subscribe, let us know what you think down below. Guys, do it. Get out. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Get out there today. <laughs> Everybody, help someone else have a spectacular day. Jeff, we're going to do this again tomorrow. Can't wait. <laughs>